Hi, everybody. This is Linda with Bedtime Bible Chat. Well, today we are in Proverbs 11, verse 4. And it's a lesson that we all know, uh, Christians, that is. But the world doesn't know it. And so I'll be preaching to the choir, so to speak. I'm not a preacher, but uh, so to speak. And hopefully, uh, maybe one day somebody that's not a Christian can learn something from this scripture. Let's get over there and look at it. All right, verse 4 in Proverbs 11 says, Riches profit not in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivereth from death. And what this verse is saying is that when a person who is very rich goes before the Lord, uh, their money isn't going to go with them. You can't take it with you. So when you get before the Lord, you are naked. No money, no power, no prestige. You are just a person before the Almighty God. And then when it says, but righteousness delivereth from death. Now, this doesn't mean that if you're righteous, you'll never die. It means that you'll never die because through eternity you will live. Now, our bodies here on earth will die, but our, our life will go on in eternity with Jesus. Now, let's see what some other scriptures say about all of this. Let's take the part about uh, riches doesn't profit a person. Let's see what that has to do with Luke 16, 19 through 31. Everybody remembers this account of the rich man who it lived a lavish lifestyle and the beggar named Lazarus was just praying for uh, food to drop from the table of the rich man so he could eat it. Rich man never tried to help him. It's not like he couldn't help him. He had plenty, but he wouldn't help him. Then he dies and he goes to hell. And now all of his riches don't help him at all. And he asks Father Abraham, to just put a drop of water on his tongue. And Father Abraham, you know, tells him, you you were doing great up there. You were rich and Lazarus had nothing and you didn't help him. And here you are down here suffering. Um, so the, the rich man tells him, well, at least tell my brother not to come down here because it's so horrible. This is my paraphrasing to get through it real quick. Now in Luke 12, 13 through 21, it's another account of a rich man who takes and has so much crops and what have you that he has to build new store buildings for it, barns, for everything because he's got so much well he dies well he can't take it all with him so it's up there now on earth for anybody who wants it can get it while the rich man is down suffering revelation 18 16 through 17 we've heard of this this talks about the fall of babylon babylon the great Talks about how rich Babylon was, the great city, clothed in fine linen, purple and scarlet, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. And, and it's fallen, and none of its riches helped it. So you see, no matter how rich you are, when it's your time to go, all your riches stay here. You do not take anything with you. Now let's go over and find out the uh, how the righteous fare. 
we find in uh, John 3, 36, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Now, if you remember, our verse talks about riches profit not in the day of wrath, but the righteous delivereth from death. So the, the death is the everlasting life, the wrath for the uh, rich. So if you are righteous, you have Jesus in your heart and in your life and direct your steps. You will have eternal life with Jesus. In 2 Corinthians 5.21 for he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So our life needs to be righteous because we reflect the righteousness of God. You remember, Christians mean Christ-like, people who are Christ-like, and we have to be righteous like God was and Jesus were righteous so let me let me um, say I, I'm going to have to make this shorter than I expected because I'm getting dizzy I, this is my second take because the first time my mic was off <laughs> so that's why I'm getting dizzy I've already done this once Anyway, um, we all know that riches get you nothing but trouble. Your life is miserable when you're rich. Uh, yeah, the rich will say, no, my life's not miserable. Really? It seems that you're always wondering, can you trust this person? How am I going to be able to keep from paying so much taxes on my wealth? Where am I going to hide my money? Yada, yada, yada. You're always having to protect that money. So it's a millstone around your neck, and you don't even know it because you're too stupid. Us, we don't need our, that much money. Just give us enough to pay our bills. Give us enough to educate our kids maybe to enjoy a little bit of life like flowers for your garden and house plants for your house <laughs> that's me i'm happiest out in the garden that's where i'm my happiest because out there i can commune with the lord like crazy i'll sit there for hours communing with the lord so the righteous people, they know money is just a tool to help them survive. And we don't, you know, it, yeah, we, we save money because, you know, you have to in order to uh, have the money for an emergency like your car breaks down and you know how expensive it is to get a car fixed. And if you don't have money saved up for that, you're just out of luck. Or maybe your roof needs to be replaced. Whew, that's a lot of money. So you got to save money to take care of the big stuff that comes down the road. There's nothing wrong with that. That is being prudent and being wise. You aren't living for that bank account to grow and grow and grow. You just want it to grow enough to be able to meet these unexpected expenditures. But we we know that if we don't have money, we know that the Lord's going to take care of us. Sure, um, some of us are taken care of so well, and some of us aren't. And that's because the Lord is trying to do a work in you, trying to reach you and for some reason you're not getting it 
And so he's he's not as giving to you as he is the next person who caught it, who got the lesson learned, and and so he's rewarding them. So the point here is you can't take it with you, so why are you trying to uh, um, amount a whole bunch, billions and billions of dollars? These billionaires became bigger billionaires during the pandemic off of our misery. They got to pay for that, and not in money either. They're going to pay for it in eternal torment. They can't take it with them. I don't know why they're doing it. I guess they figure there's no afterlife, so I'm going to live my life great now. Poor fools, they don't know. The afterlife they've got coming, wouldn't want to be them. So that's their lesson today. You can't take it with you. Just use your money wisely for all that you need. Helping others where you can. And the Lord will take care of everything else. He takes care of me and I'm about as poor as a church mouse. But I don't lack for anything. I don't need anything. Except for more plants. More, more uh, flowers for the garden. <laughs> I ran out of money, couldn't buy any more. So I said, okay, well. But I ain't worried about it. Because if the Lord wants me to have it, I'll have the money to buy more flowers. Trust in the Lord. And it's just, just that statement I just made. You'd say, Linda, he ain't going to worry about you and your flowers. Oh, if you only knew what the Lord has done for me. Yes, he cares about whether you have all the flowers you want. And I've told this story so many times, I'm sure. But I've got a flower bed back in my sitting area that is loaded with African irises. I didn't plant them. They weren't there when I got here. All of a sudden, I got bunches of them. And to top it off, they are the color to match my color scheme in my sitting area. Because he knows that I'm kind of freaky that way. I like to match things. <laughs> yes, he cares. I have a whole flower bed full of irises. When I got here, there was one iris. And now if I don't start and divide them, they're just going to get too big. I remember uh, getting plants in a pot that was sitting there that I didn't plant. And these are plants that aren't by seed. They are by bulbs or rhizomes. Ain't no bird going to deliver that. Yes, God does care about what you love, especially if you love his creations and you take care of them and you know it is from him and you praise him for it. Yes, God will give you what you want as well as what you need. But you have to have faith. Let me tell you what happened. I went out in faith one day. <laughs> Early this spring, me and Jamie, and I said, oh, I've got to start planting, and I ain't got a dime to my name. I just got my grocery money, and that's it. But I'm going out in faith. So I bought a bunch of plants, $130 worth. I was kind of like... Lord, I'm going out in faith. <laughs> I got home, and he gave me the $130. <laughs> you got to have faith that he'll take care of your needs.
even if it's just stuff you like, stuff you want, stuff that makes you happy. And he knows how much my flowers make me happy because that's where I commune with him. That's our spot. That's our special spot. And he wants to make me happy with the flowers. And if I can ever remember, I'll do a video on the flowers. <laughs> I was going to do one yesterday, but I couldn't see the screen because the sun was so bright. I'll have to wait until it's an overcast day. And you can't see much right now anyway. The flowers aren't really blooming real big. You know, the ones I put in... They have blooms on them, but you won't, you, it, it'll be more like the before picture, before everything matured and, and bloomed, before the bushes got big, they're still little, about right like that right now. So, you'll get a before picture, and then an after picture later when everything matures, but you gotta have faith. That he's going to take care of you. You don't have to worship money. Worship Jesus. He's got all the money. And he'll take care of you. Can't take it with you. So you might as well use it for good. Alright guys. Don't forget now. Come in with the Lord. He loves that so much. And that's why he blesses me so much with my flowers, I believe, because he knows that that's his and my special spot. And so he's going to make me happy with it because I trusted him to give them to me. There ain't nothing I've done to, to get it, that's for sure. It was all him. So trust in him, have faith in him, commune with him, and he'll take care of you. He's going to have your back no matter what happens. Now, if you don't belong to Jesus, he ain't going to have your back. But if you believe he is Lord and admit that you're a sinner and call on his name, Jesus Please forgive me and come into my heart. Then Jesus will have your back too. Okay, guys, there you have it. I hope this helps somebody. Maybe uh, an unsaved person will come on by accident and watch it and it'll help them. All right. I hope to see you tomorrow on Bedtime Bible Chat. If the Lord's willing, bye-bye.